I think the greatest feeling in the world is to walk up on a platform before a field of people and know that we have the power to seed them. We can make them what God wants them to be. Yes. A people tonight, that right now, that are watching, you and I have the power to make you what God wants you to be. I just, I love him so much. He's with us tonight, Reverend T.L. Osborne. And he is also the founder of the Osborne Foundation based in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Reverend Osborne is one of the greatest soul winners of this century, and that is an understatement, if anything. T.L. Osborne has preached in approximately 70 different nations to crowds of over 200,000 at one time. Many of the Osborne Crusades have made a national impact of historic proportions. In this past year, T.L. and his wife Daisy have really felt the Lord calling him to reach out and minister, especially to our own country of America. They've been traveling all over the United States. They were recently in Fort Worth, Texas for the Maranatha Ministries Convention. They've also recently made trips to Indiana, Tennessee, many other states. Brother Osborne is a dedicated author who has written a number of life-changing books. His first book, Healing the Sick, is a classic on the subject of divine healing and is in its 26th edition. His book, Purpose of Pentecost, deals with what true Pentecost really is. I hope we can get into that a little tonight. Reverend Osborne has written many tracks and has produced a miracle film which has taken uh, live footage of actual crusades for the purpose of soul winning. Brother Osborne's miracle films have been produced in over 70 major languages showing the gospel to millions around the world. Let's give him a thunderous praise the Lord. Welcome T.L. Osborne from Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'd just like to sit close to you. I just, oh, I don't boy. know. I'm rich to have you as a friend. Oh, isn't it wonderful? So much. Thank you so for coming So much happening. Tonight. God is so good and Jesus is so alive. Where no wonder we're happy. Where do we begin? Where do we get? I have so much I want to talk about. So much I want to ask you. So much we want the Holy Spirit to do tonight. Oh. What, what is, give us a little kind of state of the world worry right now. What's happening in our world and what do you see the, just ahead of us? The world is waiting to see Jesus. Yes. You know, I said the other day, the world, no, people aren't mad at Jesus. No. They're not mad at God. They're not mad at the Bible. They're just kind of fed up with uh, the, the, the entanglement that religious systems sometimes mm -hmm. puts on the gospel. Yes, yes. They're, they're, they're mad at that. Mm -hmm. They say, uh, hey, I'd like to believe, but you scare me. If I, uh, if, if, if I listen to you, you're, if I get close to you, you're going to make me choose sides. Yeah. You know, and I, you're going to make me vote. I don't want to vote. <laughs> I just want to believe. Mm -hmm. So I'm scared. If I get close to you, I'll have to take sides. So I'll just, I'll just trust my own luck. Mm -hmm. And I'll try to run my show myself and hope in the end I'll come out okay. That's too bad, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Because the Jesus that you present all the time, Paul and Jan, is the Jesus that is so lovely and mm -hmm. so kind and so good and so easy to get along with. Yes. You know, we can hammer people on the head and uh, lay out all the musts that people must do, but it's not that way. Mm -hmm. He's so wonderful to me. I'm so tickled to do what I find out He wants me to do and be what He wants me to be and <laughs> live like He wants me to live. Yes. It's great. Praise God. I don't have to, I get to. He's not difficult. He's wonderful. Yes, people sometimes, when we talk that way, people say, are you compromising? Don't you have any convictions? You've got to lay it on. You've got to get a club. I don't believe it. I don't <laughs> no. believe it, and I'm glad you don't believe it. And no that's why way. you're blessing America oh, and lifting America, lifting millions. Daisy and I, you know, it's what a pleasure to, there in our home in Tulsa, turn it on, and there you are Praise with people. Uh, that wonderful song that you just had. 
release your faith. <laughs> Reach out to Jesus. I thought as they were saying that, I was standing back there waiting to come on. I thought, how wonderful that I have faith that I can release to God. Yes, so many don't have that faith. And that's why we're here, yes. to give that faith to some more people. How do we get Beca that? Because, uh, <coughs> you know, that, that is the question, isn't yeah, it? it really is. I, I was thinking, uh, a lot of times I, I see you and I, sitting there at home, uh, and I think, are people afraid? Are, uh, you know, anything can happen. Right now, if, if, if we just reach out, like that, like that song said, to Him mm -hmm. and uh, release our faith to Him. He is so near. Mm -hmm. He's here yes. in the now. Amen. Amen. And, uh, and He's never changed. He's exactly like He was in the days that, that uh, He walked the shores of Galilee. He hasn't changed. Amen. What He did then, He does now. Yes. Amen. I absolutely believe that. Yes. You were talking about that, that lady that was blind. Yes. What, she had no faith uh, to reach out with, to release. But she got it in the meeting. You said how? By hearing the Word of That's God. It. There it is. That's where faith comes yeah. from. Yeah. Well, now, if she didn't have any faith, how did she get healed? She got it because we... we we, we offered faith to her. We offered what God said to her. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think the greatest feeling in the world is to walk up on a platform before a field of people and know that we have the power to seed them. We can make them what God wants them to be. Yes. A people tonight, that right now, that are watching, you and I have the power to make you what God wants you yes. to be. Amen. I marvel at that power. Amen. Amen. I believe in that power. Yes. The word that we can speak, the promise that we can give to people, uh, it, 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 it'll recreate you. Mm -hmm. God's word can recreate people Thank you, Jesus. and make them like He wants them to be. That little woman had no idea that God wanted to do all that for her, but she came she heard rumors in her village, naturally, about all of these wonderful things that were happening down there in the big town. Where was this, and by the way? This was at Nakuru in uh, the Rift Valley of Kenya. Africa. And uh, so she came, and uh, her, her husband brought her. She was blind, you know. And uh, it was... Uh, it, that then listening to us talk... Of course, you know, let, let, let me tell another story. Uh, uh, I, I was saying in one of our meetings, a little boy... 12 years old and a little girl, 14 years old, were so captured by that crusade in that big stadium that uh, they made a deal. They said, hey, uh, they were thinkers. And isn't it wonderful to think and get ideas to help people? Sure. That's the most fun in the world, uh, Jan, to get an idea that'll help people. Yes, indeed. And they said, let's go out to this big village Let's take us our Bible, and let's get a bell uh, with a handle. Mm -hmm. Now, they thought this up. Oh, no. Let's go out there and ring it, and then, and, and then let's, when the people come, they'll come and see what we're doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we will tell them, we'll read to them what uh, Mr. Osborne read when he preached mm -hmm. the night before. And then we'll keep track of the scriptures he writes, he gives, and we'll remember as many of them as we can, and then we'll listen to the miracles and we'll tell that. Oh. They went every day and they'd ring that bell. Just and those 14-year-old girl and 12-year-old boy, and oh my goodness. here the people come to see them kids. Well, the first time it was complete, total curiosity because this bell, what in the world are these kids up to? And then they went to tell this story. I'm thinking about that blind woman, you know, what she heard in her village. So, and, and then these kids would tell those people the miracles they saw. Well, boy, that stirred up curiosity. And they'd tell them, now, come on and you can get it too. <laughs> and the next day they'd do the same. And every day of that crusade, they did that. Mm -hmm. When that crusade was over, or de toward the end of the crusade, a preacher found out about this. Now, this went on days before even any of the preachers knew. And he went with them. And, of course, he saw a good thing. 
he jumped in on that thing <laughs> and he ended up he got building him a, a big, <laughs> yeah, boy, got to build it, built build a big church there, a big strong church. Yeah. To those two kids, My just to, you know, that's really preaching. Now, Crazy. now that's what this broadcast, this telecast, is about, isn't it? Yes, sir. Telling what the Bible says and telling what happened to someone else, mm -hmm. and that's gospel. Yes, <laughs> that's it. Amen. Uh, uh, someday, Daisy and I. I don't want to do all the talking. So, 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 you do Yeah, I get so excited. <laughs> Daisy and I want to write a book, the Gospel according to T. Ellen Daisy. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> John wrote a gospel. That's right. Of Mark wrote another gospel. Yeah. He told it a little different than John. We ought to all be writing gospels. Yeah, I believe we are. Yes. Right. We're all writing gospels. I just like to write man on a book. Yes. Well, we're writing in our actions every day. Paul said we're living epistles, known and read of all men. Read of all there you are. Yes. So, so, so the gospel, according to T. L. and Daisy, <laughs> is uh, <laughs> is what Jesus, how he revealed himself to us, how he came to us how He's worked with us, yes. and the wonderful things that He's done when we've told people about Him. That's the gospel according to you on Daisy.